clock's a little slow, but it is six o'clock. Salt pandas are ready for action. They're actually not going to do much today. They're going to do a little something. I need my recipe book. Or is it... It's up here. These are really good, by the way. Very good food in the can. <clears throat> We're going to need some of these. I'm going to do that later. And... Hi, Brock. Are, we're gonna start, I think. What is that? <laughs> <laughs> it's like this weird orange drink. It's very Halloween looking. It's black and orange. It's Ticino with oat milk. Mm. That's not for me though. That's not what we're gonna be doing today. We're not making Ticino. We are making muffins. I'm gonna snack on pasta in the meantime. And we are making vanilla bean and chocolate bean muffins. I'm gonna get my recipe ready. Let's see, there it is. So, I'm gonna give it a few more moments. How many people do we have in here? Yeah, fix my hair. We got two people here. Two. Yeah. Perfect. We're gonna get started. Um, first, I just wanna make sure everyone has their ingredients ready if they are doing the cook along. So I'm gonna get all the ingredients out as I list them off here. Brock says, I didn't know Bo ever used recipes. Yeah, this is a sort of a recipe. This is from my mom, I think, originally. And then we tweaked it because it's a baking recipe. So I try and keep that consistent because if you, I don't, I don't know the texture as well enough. I haven't done this enough times to know how much of things to add. Um, and then since it's a cook along, I figure we, we, it's good to have a recipe <laughs> so that other people can make it. But we'll probably deviate from the recipe. You'll see there's parts of this recipe that aren't a recipe, if that makes any sense. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna start here <laughs> with my recipe is like an outline. I, t I like to use recipes when I'm doing something new or when I want a specific result when there's a lot of stuff that I'm not used to doing that I don't do all the time because it helps me create a guideline. And then we can talk about how things, tweaking different things are gonna affect the overall outcome of the dish. So if you get a recipe and you're like, I don't know what to do here, or you don't have this ingredient, we can talk a little bit about that. So we're gonna need a cup and a half of all purpose flour. We've got our flour. This is all purpose, unbleached, and there's actually other purpose flours. Um, <laughs> there's bread flour, which is has a higher protein content. It's gonna develop more gro protein, I mean, more gluten, and it will be chewier. It's kind of like a bagel. If you think about how chewy a bagel is and some pizzas with a really chewy crust. That's on the higher end of the protein scale, and the lower end is cake flour, or pastry flour, that has less protein content that's going to create a flour that's more delicate with less gluten. All-purpose is good for everything. All-purpose is multi-purpose, so <laughs> it's a very versatile flour to have on hand. Um, so we've got our flour. You can put in some whole wheat if you want. I think I mentioned you could use gluten-free in this case. These muffins do come out a little bit more on the dense side. Um, so the development of gluten isn't super crucial, um, but if you don't have gluten or something, a substitute that some gluten-free flours do have, you'll, they'll likely just crumble apart when you try and have them. So you need something to kind of bind them together and we're using the gluten for that. So we got our flour. We're gonna need baking soda. Baking soda is here. <laughs> what is baking soda exactly? It is a chemical. I know I don't like using that word. I mean, all foods are chemicals essentially. This is sodium bicarbonate. Um, baking soda is an alkaline substance which means that on the pH scale, if you remember pH or anything like that, 
it's more of a base, it's higher on the scale, it's above seven, seven is the neutral point. When you go below seven, you get acidic. Alkaline stuff, it has a bitter taste, acidic stuff has a sour taste. Um, soap is alkaline and lemons are acidic. And we're using baking soda in this recipe. And that's what the original recipe that I got this from called for. And the way baking soda works is it reacts with an acid that will be provided by one of the other ingredients. Likely in this case, it'll be from, I think the fruit that we're using has some acidity. And I'm assuming it's enough. I never done the tests. I never used baking soda. I don't have baking soda on hand. Um, I'm baking powder. So I'm assuming it's enough to get some leavening. So when this combines with an acid, it makes bubbles and gas. So we'll do a little quick science experiment <laughs> right now. Cole says, is there a sing-along with the cook-along? You know, I've been thinking I need a Cat Chef Kitchen, um, <laughs> uh, what's it called, a uh, theme song. I've got the piano right there. It's going to start um, singing. A, I'll think of the lyrics. In the meantime, <laughs> might be for an episode when I have some kombucha, some kombucha or wine. <laughs> um, so what I'm going to do to kind of demonstrate how baking soda works is add some here. So here's our baking soda. And then when I add an acid to this, these are going to combine and there's going to be a chemical reaction that takes place and it's going to transform the baking soda and the vinegar into carbon dioxide, I believe, and a salt. And carbon dioxide is a gas. So what we should see is some sort of bubbling that starts to happen. There you go. What was most definitely Bill Nye meets Bob Ross meets Elton Brown. Yeah. <laughs> So there is our reaction, and what we'd be left with is some salty water. I didn't measure this out, so you might have some leftover acidity or alkalinity or something. But that's more or less what happens. Now, baking powder, sometimes you don't have, you don't want to add an, let me back up for a second. Sometimes you see, um, I don't remember what the name of the thing was that I was going to say. Um, there's like an, an acid or a powder or something that you add sometimes. I can't remember. Anyways, I'll come back to that, I think, of it. Sometimes you don't have an acidic ingredient in your baking mix. So in that case, you use baking powder. Baking powder has baking soda, and it also has um, another ingredient in it. I think it's like an, emo uh, an aluminum type thing or something else. And basically what that does is it, it has, it's a complete leavening agent in it of itself. So I think when you combine it with water, it has a two stage gas expansion process. When you combine it with water, it, it develops some bubbles, much like when you combine the baking soda with vinegar, it has bubbles. And then there's another reaction that takes place once it's heated, where it bubbles up more when it's heated. So baking soda, um, I think it's also accurate to say that you can use baking powder in place of baking soda, but you cannot use baking soda in place of baking powder. It's one of those squares a rectangle, but a rectangle is not a square type deals. But this is chemistry, not geometry, but it's all things. It all goes together. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so we got baking soda. I love that explanation. Thank you. Thank you. And this stuff will go bad um, too, so you do want to replace it every so often, otherwise you end up with like a bitter tasting. Is there any check test? Like if, let's say you forgot to write the date or you don't remember that it was within 30 days, or uh, is there any way to like test I would the baking say if it, soda? Well, the if test it fizzes? We did, if it fizzes like that, mm -hmm. that's probably a good test, but that might not be enough. Mm -hmm. That might, so I, I'm not sure if that's a good enough test. Um, Anyways, that's a good question, but yeah, I don't think there's a better test than that that I'm aware of. I can look into it and let people know next time. We're going to need salt. I didn't write that in the ingredient list, I don't think, but hopefully everybody has salt. We're going to need maple syrup. And I mentioned you could use a bunch of different sweeteners here. Um, and I said I would talk about the sweeteners a little bit. So maple syrup we like to use because it's 
fairly natural. Um, it has, so <clears throat> there's like the, the level of processed that a sugar can be, and then there's the glycemic index. So the glycemic index, I was just looking at this, is how much your body responds, I think, to the, the sugar and reacts to it. So usually you want foods with a low glycemic index so it doesn't spike your insulin levels. Um, for example, high fructose corn syrup gets a really bad rep because it's both extremely processed and it has a very high glycemic index. Um, maple syrup and honey, um, obviously honey is, comes from bees, so some vegans won't have, not if you're a true vegan, you won't have honey, um, but we both have honey. Um, honey and maple syrup I like because they have a lot of like nutrients in them. They're, they're naturally full of minerals and other good things that haven't been filtered out. It's not pure sugar. I believe they also have a low glycemic indices. indices, indexes. Um, another common thing that is marketed as a health food that I was just actually reading about for this, and it turns out it's actually not that good for you, is agave. Um, so agave syrup um, is, it's, it has, it's known as being like healthier because it's a it has a low glycemic index, um, but the issue is it has, I think, more fructose than a lot of other things. Fructose is a type of sugar that's in fruit, and that seems to be linked to um, diseases like fatty liver disease mm. and weight gain and things like that, I believe. Um, so this may not be the best option if you're going for the healthiest thing. Obviously, if you have it on hand now and you're just using a tiny amount, it's not going to kill you or harm you, but after reading that, I definitely would probably just do mostly honey and maple syrup as my sweeteners of choice for when I have to do sweetening. Date syrup also appears to be a really good alternative. Um, I've heard of that. Dates are these dried fruits. They're kind of like giant raisins. These are dates. We like to incorporate some of these and grind them up um, to actually add sweetness as well. Um, it's harder to disperse them with your own homemade equipment, but date syrup might be good for that because it's already been crushed and like syrupized. <laughs> <laughs> so with sugars, there's there's fructose, glucose, and sucrose, and they all affect your body differently, I believe. And I I can't speak to the details on that because I'm not a nutritionist, but I can tell you those are the three things. So maybe you should look up maybe what types of sugars have highest amount of that and where to go from there. I think obviously the best way to get sugars though too is natural fruits, um, but of course don't eat too many fruits. Um, some people are fruitarians, mm -hmm. but you can, just because it's fruit doesn't, it, you don't want to eat too much of it because it, it is a lot of sugar. Um, and sugar is one of the, can be very harmful to your body. And so we've got our maple syrup. We're gonna need another one because that is not enough maple syrup. We are going to then need, we're gonna need an apple. We have some, we're gonna use a Fuji apple for this. And the reason I'm gonna use a Fuji apple instead of a green apple is the Fujis are a little sweeter than green apples. Um, so maybe we can cut back on some of our sugars that we're gonna be adding to the dish um, in order to do that. And the apple supposedly acts as a, it's supposed to sort of act as an egg substitute. I don't know how much I really believe that that's actually what it's doing or helping. Um, I haven't tested without the apple. We sometimes use a banana in place of it, but these muffins come out so dense that it probably wouldn't matter if you left out the apple or the banana. So you could sub in half of a banana or a whole small banana. Half of a big banana or a whole small banana in place of an apple. Keep in mind that the bananas, bananas have a very banana, unique, unique banana flavor. So that will get imparted if you use a little bit of banana. So just some caution there. I don't need a big one. We are going to need a a coconut oil, some coconut oil. Got a big vat. 
Pop, pop, pop. Got our organic virgin coconut oil. We get virgin oil because it is less processed than refined oil. And again, I, I try and my philosophy on cooking and eating, I'm not a nutritionist, but my philosophy is to eat as less, as least processed as possible, um, but processed enough to not give you a stomach ache. Because if I ate raw food the whole time, I would have a stomach ache constantly. So, and processing, heat, heat is processing food. Um, teaspoon of vanilla. We're gonna need vanilla and we're gonna need cinnamon. Cinnamonamon, cinnamonamon. That's gonna be for our per our first portion, our first portion of the um, dish, and then for our second portion, we're gonna need black beans and white beans, and we're gonna need cacao powder. You're getting the whole educational part early on, so cacao powder or cocoa powder, and I looked into this because I did my research and <laughs> feel free to second guess everything. Cacao and cocoa are very similar. I believe they're both cocoa beans that have been ground up, but the difference is that cacao has not been heated. I believe that's what the difference is. So this is like more of like a raw diet friendly thing. Um, whereas cocoa, the, it gets heated beforehand. Um, and I'm not sure how that affects the flavor. To me, this tastes like chocolate. So it, I'm, I'm sure maybe side by side they have a slight difference. It might be like raw almond butter and roasted almond butter, where it's still, they both taste like almond, but one of them definitely tastes different than the other. But this works for, for me. So cacao powder. All right. So first thing we're gonna do is... <laughs> Heat up our oven and get that started. Step gonna... step one for your cook along. Step one for the cook along. So now now we're actually going to start cooking along. So if you haven't been paying attention <laughs> and you're cooking along, please start to pay attention now, or you might run behind. <laughs> <laughs> or if I'm going too fast at any point, let me know and I'll slow down. And we're going to preheat the oven to 325 degrees. Make sure there's nothing in the oven before mm. you preheat it. That's always very Im an important step. That's a great tip. And sometimes there's things in there that you maybe forgot you put in there because it's a very convenient storage location. It's just a big empty space. <laughs> so we're going to go with a 325. And I think I've done this at 350 as well. 325 is going to go a little slower. I can't give you a good reason as to why... <laughs> It's 325 as opposed to like 400. It might burn too much on the outside if we put it at 400. Um, so we want it to be an even baking temperature. We don't want, we're not going for a crispy exterior like with bread. When I like crank it up or pizza where we want that crispy mm -hmm. exterior. We want to keep it nice and moist and delicate and soft and yummy. We don't really want like the other thing. I forgot the main ingredient. I just realized. Nobody called me out on it. We need squash. We're making squash muffin things. We gotta have the squash. Jeez. Squash? So squash, this is a squash. It's not there anymore. This one? Yeah, there it is. <laughs> but you didn't make it? I did make it. Oh. This is the squash in squash in natural squash mm, form. Okay. This is what it looks like in the garden. Just imagine some more dirt around it <laughs> and some vines. Um, this is a winter squash. Winter squash is like a harder shell. It's kind of like pumpkins and gourds and things like that. Those are all winter squashes. Um, summer squash is like zucchini or the yellow squash or eggplant. And somewhere in there it is. There it is. It well, where did you get these winter squashes? Oh yeah, these winter squashes are straight from my mom's garden in Long Island. Oh, that makes them <laughs> so So these are homegrown squashes from not our home. But. <laughs> Brock, make sure the packing materials are not still in the oven. Yeah. <laughs> your dad says. <laughs> this is it cooked. 
So I know I showed you guys some instructions on how to cook this. I tried to send out an email with a couple more ideas for microwaving squash and all that. Um, we simply, I simply chopped it in half. We used a different squash though. This is an egg corn squash, I believe. We might have used a butter cup. Is that, that was like the one type I didn't put on the thing. There's a whole bunch of different types of squashes. Um, not a butter nut, but a butter cup. It looked kind of like a big delicata, but definitely wasn't an egg corn, a pumpkin, or a spaghetti squash. So this is it. And I actually really don't like squash, just like as is. <laughs> I have to do something to squash of like all sorts, except for eggplant. But anyways, there's our squash. So what we're gonna do is mix the dry ingredients together first, and then we're gonna mix the wet ingredients together, and then we're gonna combine them to make a batter. So let's get our mixing bowl. So everyone go get your mixing bowl right now if you don't have it out already. Brock says, an oven? What's that? <laughs> Your mom said that was the buttercup you just held up. That was the buttercup. Then what was the other one, mom? What was the one that was like, looked like a delicata, but it was big? It doesn't have like a stem. It was like a football shape almost. Um, we're also going to need the food processor. No, we'll do the dry first. Okay. I'm getting ahead of myself, but this order doesn't matter. So dry. Here's our big bowl. <laughs> and we're gonna first need a cup and a half of all-purpose flour. If you have any other flours you'd like to mix in, you're welcome to. Just make sure the total is a cup and a half. Some, uh, go over the sink here, try and keep it messy and not be, not clean, I mean. Not keep it messy. Keep it clean, not be a messy. Panda. Um, so this is one cup of flour, and we're gonna add another cup. She says oh, wait, that was cup. a giant zucchini. That was a giant zucchini? What? <laughs> really? This is the half cup now, so I already added the one cup. something in there but no oh well it's gonna get cooked we'll be fine building immunity <laughs> building immunity that's our that's our pandemic um mitigation strategy <laughs> for this <laughs> and all future pandemics Let's throw a little bit of dirt and everything and it'll be good um <laughs> don't worry i don't do that when people come over um <laughs> we're gonna need a quarter teaspoon of salt Add in just a little bit of a salt. Little, <laughs> a little. The salt is gonna help bring out the flavors a bit more. Honestly, you could probably leave the salt out even if you wanted to, and no one would probably notice. <laughs> <laughs> what does the salt add to this? I think it just brings out the flavors a little bit more. Mm -hmm. um, but sugar also has like that effect too. I think, oh, what is it? There's something about salt and sugar where sugar does make you like thirsty. Mm -hmm. um, next we're gonna need to add our baking soda. We're gonna add about a teaspoon of that. You could add a little less. I try not to add too much of this stuff. Baking soda and baking powder are chemical leavenings. That's what they're referred to. Um, Natural leavening is, an example of that would be yeast. That's a teaspoon. Next we're going to add just a little bit of cinnamon. And this is optional. If you do not like cinnamon, you don't have to add any. But we're just gonna do a couple little shakes. Just adds a nice flavor. It also adds some it gives the perception of sweetness without actually adding sweetness. Now what I'm going to do is just mix up the dry ingredients. Just toss them around a bit. If we don't mix up the dry ingredients like this, you might end up with a pocket of uh, 
salt or baking soda in one spot and then you get like a weird one muffin that just comes out with like a really weird flavor going on we, we want to avoid that so we're going to toss toss this all up there we go now we got the flour nice and mixed up and next we're going to need the food processor or blender so grab your food processor or your blender Outlet locations are very bizarre. <laughs> Not just that one. Okay. So, the first thing I'm going to do is add our apple to this. And I'm going to process the apple first because um, we want this to get ground up really nice so it can get evenly dispersed. And an apple could be kind of tough, like a Hernandez. Oh. I like that. Yeah. All right. So there is our apple. And if you used applesauce, you could actually avoid this step completely. You could just go ahead and add your apple to the food processor. You're not going to need to grind it up like we're going to do. All right, so we got our apple in. I'm gonna turn the food processor on and just turn this, pulverize this apple into an apple sauce without anything else. Look at that apple go. We're gonna need to scrape down the walls now. We'll do it one more time. That's about as good as it's gonna get with that little apple in it. It's just gonna keep ending up on the walls. So we're gonna need to add our additional ingredients. Let's <laughs> <laughs> take our squash, and, I, and you could use whatever other vegetable you want here. You could use bananas. You could use more apple. Mm. You're just gonna want about a cup and a half of this. If you add more, it's gonna make your dead your dead denser. Your bread denser. I <laughs> have like some weird. Speaking thing that goes on when I talk. <laughs> that was a good one. <laughs> Tom likes it. So a cup and a half of oh, squash. I wouldn't pack it super tightly, because like I said, this is already pretty dense, so I'm probably adding a little bit much to begin with. So there's our... Eh. But I do want a lot of squash. So maybe you pack it. Yeah, let's pack it. Pack it in there. Pack it in. Mm, make sure you don't get any seeds in there. Mm. You can actually eat squash seeds, um, but you have to like hold them first. I think that's the right verb. You have to remove the outer casing. So that was a cup, and now we're gonna add another half cup of this cooked squash. It has to be cooked. If it isn't cooked, you it won't cook enough in the oven. Things will go wrong, and you end up with like a really weird, not tasty dessert. So we have our squash pre-cooked. You might even be able to buy squash in the store pre-cooked, hmm. if you so choose. In like a can? Yeah, I wasn't even thinking that. In a can, sometimes I think you can even get like in a bag. All right, next we're gonna need to add, I have in my recipe here a half cup of maple syrup and a quarter cup of agave. I kind of feel funny about using agave now after mm. reading that, so let's just go with the maple syrup. You could do any combination. The goal is about three quarters of a cup of a sweetener. And I'm probably gonna do a little bit less actually. I might do like a half cup and then some, we'll see what else. Just start with a half cup. Whoa, not even a half cup. Your mom says you can buy canned squash. There we go. I know you can buy canned pumpkin, panned pumpkin. So mm -hmm. I think I'm just gonna skip, skip, 
keeping like this. It's really, it's actually impressive. It, it's weird how natural it comes out for me. It's kind of like a weird version of Pig Latin. It's unintentional. There is a half cup of maple syrup. And like I said you usually want to do about a quarter cup more. That's going to make them really delicious. Mm. Sometimes I'll just do a half cup. I'm, I'm going to do a mix between a quarter and a half cup. I'm just going to do like a little, a little dollop more because we're going to put a little icing on this. So about a half cup to three quarters of a cup. It's not going to come out overly sweet. If you add like a, I think the original recipe that we were basing this off of asked for, or called for, asked, or recipe asked for, it called for a quarter, sorry, a full cup of like some sort of sugar. So we cut it back from that. <sighs> we need coconut oil. That's going in here. We're going to need a half cup of melted coconut oil. I think I was doing these last where I was only doing like a quarter cup of sugar and like a quarter cup of coconut oil. So it works good both ways. We're gonna you can dump that. that. But there's water and it's just gonna get weird. So there's this one. I have to heat this coconut oil a little bit because right now it's not liquid. If it's not liquid, it's not really gonna do do what we want it to do. So I kind of disperse as well. Oh no. Be careful not to get coconut oil on your, your clothes or any sort of oil. It will stain your clothes. Mm. Alright. You can do this in the microwave too. If you have one of those, we don't. So we're just doing it this way. Yes, Brock, that's pasta on the stove. Yeah, this is my my cat chef snack. This will be for dinner, real dinner. I'm not sure what we're going to do with it. Yep, leftovers for dinner. We're not going to have muffins for dinner. I'm having muffins for dinner. She's having muffins for dinner. <laughs> And pasta for dessert. Well. <laughs> Have you ever had a dessert pasta? You know, I saw it once in Elf. <laughs> the movie. Or do you know the scene I'm talking about where he put like maple syrup and sprinkles all over his pasta? I remember this. But to answer your question, no, I've not had it. I don't think I've tried to make it, but it can be done. Maybe that'll be another episode one night. I'll make a dessert <laughs> pasta. Oh, wow. Uh, we don't want to get this too hot. You notice I took this off the stove and I'm just kind of mixing it right now. Because if I added this hot, it's going to start to cook what's in there already. Especially if we had it, had it hot to the... Had it hot <laughs> <laughs> to the flour. <laughs> um, it would start to like bake the food before it went in the oven. I really don't know how I'm doing that. Definitely not needing to, but I definitely enjoy it when it happens. <laughs> Next, we are going to need a half teaspoon, just kidding, a full teaspoon of vanilla. Whoa. Oh yeah, turn on the food processor now. Let it go. Look at 
It looks really weird. Mm-hmm. Because the coconut oil, because I had the squash in the fridge, so the coconut oil hardened up the squash, hardened up the coconut oil again. So it's got little chunks of hardened coconut oil in there. But this looks good enough for what we're doing. I'm gonna taste it. I'm sure, camera girl wants to taste. Mmm. Mm. Now this is gonna taste sweeter than the actual muffins will be mm -hmm. because we haven't diluted it with any it's flour so yet. Good. Autumn is glowing right now. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone should sample what they just made. <laughs> and it's okay if you lick the spatula because it's gonna get cooked anyway, so you're not contaminating anything. <laughs> it's so sweet. Mm -hmm. So now we're gonna add a little bit at a time to our cup and a half of flour that we have going on here. I'm just kind of mix this, mix this all up. Now it's important, two things here, it's important to mix this um, not super hard. You do not want to beat this, there's a reason we're not doing this in the food processor or the blender. Because if we over mix, we develop more gluten and the finished product is going to come out uh, really chewy and we don't want a really chewy muffin. It might come out too much like a, like a sourdough bread almost texture, which we don't really want that. If you do want that, if you think that'd be fun and cool, then go for it. Just mix the whole night away. <laughs> <laughs> we are gonna leave this out because we're gonna need this again later. This, uh, or not even later, soon. <laughs> the concept of sooner and, and later confused me as a child. I thought they were the same thing. <laughs> I didn't understand. Until I was asked to do something I didn't want to do, and I guessed, and I said sooner, and I didn't want to do it, but I really meant later, but I didn't understand that sooner actually meant sooner than later. So, that was the moment I learned. I don't remember what the thing was that I wanted to do. <laughs> amazing. <laughs> all right, so we're just mixing this all up until it is thoroughly combined. Quite a little mixing time. Quite mixing time, yeah. Think about happy little thoughts. Yeah. Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Mm. What did I just do? Everyone should sample what they just mm -hmm. did. Wow, so there's no raw egg in it, remember? Um, so it's totally safe. <laughs> mm. It's like better than normal, actually. Right? <laughs> Alright, next thing we're going to need is a muffin tin. Is that what it's properly called? Do we want to make little muffins or big muffins? <laughs> Mm. Or both. Good question. I guess you have that pan in your hand. Yeah, so you can make any size muffins you want. Just do that. The little muffins are good because they're fun. <laughs> they're good because they're fun. Brock says while you are mixing, you could have a guitar player or organist playing music in the background. There we go. We had an, a, a professional pianist here last weekend. Mm. Yeah, he we didn't did. play us anything, though, did I know he? I asked. It was awkward. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I need to learn. 
I need to have like a little ukulele around my neck at all times, that way I can just strum when there's a quiet moment. So it can be both a cook along and a sing along. Maybe grow an extra arm and hand while you're at it. Yeah. If only I could sing. That is really good, interesting. Or maybe my lack of ability to <laughs> sing would make it interesting. <laughs> You just did a fun little twirl. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I may not be able to sing, but I can dance. <laughs> so right now I'm going to <laughs> spread oil on the inside of our muffin pockets. I don't know if that's the proper term for these little cavities, but that's what I call them. All right. And this is just going to help prevent the batter from sticking to the muffin tin. I think a lot of, I think this is a, this is a non-stick tin. <laughs> I think this is a non-stick tin to begin with. So it should be fine. It shouldn't, I, I shouldn't really even need to do this, but it's a, it's a helpful safety measure and it's so little oil, it's not like I'm frying these or making them super greasy or anything. All right. Let's, let's start adding some of these. I might need to whip out the second tin. <laughs> whip it. Okay. And another thing, we're not going to fill these all the way to the top because we're going to put a little topping on them that we haven't gotten to yet. Cause don't worry, I didn't forget about those beans. I mean, you're probably wondering, what's happening with the beans? They're coming. So we're gonna be a little bit less full. Sometimes less is more better. Sometimes less is more better. Like when doing these muffins. Yeah, I'm gonna need a spoon for this. Cause that's not the best choice. That's cool. <laughs> the best utensil of choice. Here we go. And now you can kind of do do this. It's kind of like, kind of reminds me of whack-a-mole, but less violent, <laughs> less animals involved. Just build a muffin instead of whack-a-mole. Alright, yeah, I'm definitely going to need another tin for this. If you find that you don't have enough tins, you can do, you can just wait. For the one tin to finish and make more in a second batch you can keep this in the fridge for a minute like by a minute i mean like a, a day or two you can let this just sit in the fridge before you bake it you could probably even freeze it and nothing bad would happen you can do a bunch of things maybe we'll make our vanilla muffins and we'll get these going that way maybe we could try and finish these before i don't think we're gonna finish within the hour, but we can at least start these. Um, so you're making multiple kinds of muffins? Yeah, we're gonna make a, a chocolate bean and a vanilla bean. So these will be, we'll make these vanilla. And then the second batch there is gonna go and be chocolate. Here. You can rinse this out if you want to. I'm not going to. Don't need to really. We're going to start with vanilla beans. So I've got our organic Great Northern beans. I don't know if there's a Great Southern bean. So should cook along people only be doing half? Um. So I don't know. If, yeah, cook along people. You could choose whatever you want to do for this next portion. Um, if you want to, let's just start. So I guess it depends on if you're making chocolate, vanilla, or both with us. If you have enough room in your muffin tin, you got all your batter in your muffin tin, and you started a second one, I'm going to start a second muffin tin once I get these in the oven. So I'm going to do the vanilla, put these in the oven, and then I'm going to use this other tin and do chocolate while these other ones are cooking with that leftover batter. 
So at home you could decide however you want to do it. Um, I don't know. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. If you are only making one flavor though, of course, you don't need to do both things here. Alright, so the reason that this we're doing this to begin with is because I made these at Christmas for Santa Claus. And <laughs> Santa Claus and everyone else seemed to really like them. And it was a request from when I started Catch Up Kitchen to show you how to how to do it to, to make this recipe. So right now I'm just rinsing out the beans in the can. I just kind of open them, dump them, then put some water over them once or twice. Do that whole thing. And what am I gonna, how much of this do we need? We don't need that much because it's just gonna be a little bit of icing. I'm gonna add half the can. So here's what, here's what we're getting freestyle now. Um, maybe a little bit more than half. Yeah, just a little over half, almost two thirds. Let's just add two thirds so we can call it a nice two thirds of a can. <laughs> Next we're gonna need a quarter cup of coconut oil. This is the random part. And I'm not gonna bother melting this. Whoa. Whoa. Okay, quarter cup, roughly. It's going to make a very interesting topping for our muffins. Oh yeah, so muffins and cupcakes. Well, let me, let me, I'll get off that in a second. We're also gonna need vanilla. So we're just gonna add like a teaspoon, half teaspoon of vanilla. You can see, when I start the part of the recipe that I didn't use a recipe, I get it from a recipe. This is my own thing. And then we're gonna add maple syrup to taste. I'd start with three tablespoons, almost a quarter cup, two to three tablespoons, and then we're going to um, we're gonna add more as we think we need it. You can always add more sweetener. It's hard to take away. The moon is really cool right now. I'm just going to let this go until it is smooth. I mentioned cupcakes versus muffins. Um, muffins are more of like a bread, uh, a uh, batter bread. A cupcake, similar in shape, but cakes typically have more fat and sugar than they do actually flour. So that's the main difference here. We have a cup and a half of flour and not a cup and a half of sugar. <laughs> and not a cup and a half of oil. So let's see how our smooth bean mixture tastes. It's beany and delicious. It actually shouldn't taste very beany at all. Mm-hmm very nice and refreshing. Autumn, what do you think? Mm. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to take this and put a little dollop on top of each of our muffins. And you don't want to overload this too much because this has no leavening in it. So this is just going to stay pretty much how it is. Um, you could also do muffins where you stuff them with this stuff, stuff them with this stuff, and uh, yeah, you can leave it raw and do it as a topping afterwards. Just kind of a fun little textural difference with these. And it's fun to tell people that this is bean, because it does not taste like bean. When I give it to people, they're like, what, this is bean? <laughs> this isn't bean? Oh, I guess it is. All right, so there is our bean muffins. <laughs> <laughs> Some bad green to me. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and stick these in, and then we're gonna do the chocolate ones next with our other muffin in.
Mm. Look at how beautiful that is. <laughs> We're gonna put these in for about My recipe says to put them in until done. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. So we're That's gonna the get... best. <laughs> Literally so fast. Well, these are little, so what does that mean? They're going to be about Less? 20 to 25 minutes. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that was kind of my top out. That's kitchen at its finest right there. <laughs> Cook until done. Cook until done, add until it's enough, and serve when it's just right. And ready. All right, let's get that out of there. <laughs> save it. Oh yeah, we're gonna save it. A dipping sauce. It's a dipping sauce. <laughs> this is my dinner. This is dinner. This is what I'm having for dinner. I'm just gonna pour this all over pasta and see how this goes. Oh my god! You want <laughs> Actually, to? Actually, I want to try it. <laughs> <laughs> It's really good. Oh my gosh. She's doing it. I mean, it's not very weird. Pasta is just flour, so. How is it, love? <laughs> it's really good. Yeah, she likes it. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. I hope y'all are enjoying the show tonight. I wish people could be here. We gotta do our, get our Airbnb reserved, our, our mansion in the woods. Mm. <laughs> people can stay at and we'll have a whole week of fun cooking and games and it'll be great. <laughs> and now we need our black beets. Whoa. Sometimes. It's actually most of the time. Yeah, I guess. I say almost all the time. Almost every time. Every time it gets me. Shh. All right, so I'm opening the black beans. That's what's going on. I'm doing the same rinsing process, and now we're going to make our chocolate frosting. Whoa, whoa. All right, we're gonna add about a half. No, we said a third, right? I mean, a third turned out to be plenty, but there's a third, two thirds, sorry, two thirds of the can of beans. Next, we shall need a quarter cup of coconut oil again. Okay? It can be a little, I'm kind of going a little shy on the quarter cup. There's some decadent muffins. <laughs> Definitely a dessert muffin. Yeah. Now we need our cacao. Do we have another one open? Or did I finish it? I must have finished it. I don't see it. I don't see it either, Bo. I remember using it recently when I made something. Brock says he's looking forward to the vegan cooking retreat in the mountains. I am too. I think it'll be fun. I think it'll be a lot of fun. I have to figure out how to, we'll do things like this for figure out how to open the cacao powder. I'm gonna need a... Stabbing device? Yeah. Well, this is just a poor design. <laughs> this should be a better, better does customer it, experience. Does it come off? It doesn't even have instructions. Hmm. Hmm. I think I used a knife last time I did this. <laughs> this is very dangerous. 
One week, Bo needs to go through the cupboards and the refrigerators to show all the items you guys use day to day in cooking and baking. Hmm. All the items we use day to day? Yeah. That'd be a fun episode. Yeah. That could be an episode when I have some to throw in the oven. Oh, oh dear. Oh my. Oh. <laughs> now we're going to add a bunch of this. A bunch. A bunch. How much is it serving? One tablespoon is a serving. We're going to add a quarter cup to start and see where that gets us. Let me find my quarter cup first. And you can add as much of this as you want if you really like chocolate. doing cat trash kitchen so right now it's gonna taste not very good because we haven't added any sweetener we're gonna need about the same amount of sugar we added last time if I can find it there it is same amount of syrup roughly a couple tablespoons so we've got our black beans our cacao our coconut oil and our maple syrup in this lovely thing. We're going to turn it on and let it get smooth. We'll see how that tastes in a minute. While it's going, I can grease up the the pan. Our oven vents right there, so it's very hot right there. Mm. It's a bit all along the edges. And let's see how our black bean stuff tastes. <laughs> <laughs> I love how much you laugh at the stupid things I do, it's great. Wow. 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 <laughs> Is everyone else getting this reaction? Wow. I think I might even want more chocolatey. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna add just a little bit more chocolate here. Maybe two two more tablespoons. Mix up a wee bit more. Oh, I really like that actually. I don't know if you would. Autumn's not the biggest on chocolate. Oh, yeah. Do you want to taste it? What are you. Yeah, <laughs> she's making a face. She hates chocolate. <laughs> I didn't think she'd like it. I like it. Mm, I don't like it. <laughs> I don't want my pasta with it. <laughs> so, looks like these will be my muffins. I'm going to make her really jealous too, because I'm going to do yeah. something special to one of these muffins. I'm going to do it to the first one here. I'm going to add a little bit. And then I'm going to add, you don't have to do this at home, this is an impromptu decision. We have these little Oreo things, oh, wow. and I'm going to bake one of these into one of these chocolate muffins, and it's going to be fantastic. So you just put it right in there. It's like a little surprise. Wow. Yeah, she's going to like that a lot. Good one. We'll just make one of those. Maybe you could do one without the brown topping. Yeah? You want a plain one? A vanilla one? I'll do a vanilla one for you. 
No, Autumn's vanilla one. <laughs> no, it's okay. We can do it. No, it's we okay. We have the vanilla. No, it's okay. Really? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm gonna do it anyways. <laughs> I know you're gonna have it. It's me. <laughs> you're not just gonna let it sit there. Alright, one last bit here. So I want to know if people made vanilla or chocolate. Yeah, what did you or guys both? make? And did they do big? Did you guys do big ones or small muffins? Yeah. What What's happening? What's going on out there, cook yeah. along folks? Hopefully, mom's still awake. I don't know if she made it through this. I know it's getting late. <laughs> okay. Mmm. Oh, this batter is like. Oh, there's no chocolate in there. There's no chocolate in this. Yeah, okay, I gotta do the vanilla one first. If you're really crazy, you could even do a vanilla swirl. You do chocolate and vanilla. All right, chocolate time. And we're just gonna add this all over this. Mm. Your mom did vanilla. She did vanilla? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Brock says, how long should they bake in the microwave? <laughs> Till they're done. <laughs> you actually probably could cook these in the microwave. Um, you don't want to put anything metal in there. Um, because it'll spark and not be good. But you could probably do this in the microwave. I don't see a reason why this wouldn't work. They might get a little weird texturally. Oh man, I just want to eat this. Mmm. Wow. Mm. I don't know when I became such a fan of chocolate. It's like a new Yeah, thing this has developed. Yeah. So I guess as I get older. <laughs> Alright, we're gonna throw these in. And our other muffins are coming along nicely there. It's got about ten minutes there. What time is it? It's not fourteen. <laughs> I don't know if people wanna hang out and wait till we finish, or if we just call it here and say good luck. I'd love to hear how people's muffins go. If you're just hanging out, you got your muffins in. How do they know when their muffins are done? Um, when you stick a knife or a toothpick in them and it comes out clean. And you thought um, it'd be about 25 minutes for mini ones and how long for big ones? I'd say like 30 to 40 minutes for a big one. Um, but you could check, everyone's oven is different. Um, ovens all operate differently. That's, I think, why I kind of wrote that, because it's really hard to tell people how long to cook something. It's better to tell them what to, what it's going to look like when it's done. So, I think when I put the squash recipe, I'm like, yeah, the squash can take anywhere between 25 and 45 minutes, depending on like, the squash and all that. So, yeah, you're going to, you basically want to stick, a, when you stick a toothpick in or a knife, it should come out relatively clean. If you're really impatient and you really like these, you can take them out earlier. They're, they're fine when they're underdone. There's no raw egg. Um, so you can eat just the batter or just these beans. And then mm. they can uh, drizzle this as their finishing topping once it comes out of exactly. the oven. Mm -hmm. This is gonna be one more like finishing touch if you like to do that. Um, I'm gonna do it. Mmm. <laughs> Chocolate pasta is actually really good. Wow. <laughs> that's what that's what we need to do more of. I should make a dessert pizza. Mmm. 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 -hmm. Mm. Well, yum. Well, yum. People sh should take pictures of their yeah. muffins. Are people done? Do you want to hang out until your muffins are done? <laughs> what should we do? Autumn, what do you have? Do you care? Do you want to just be like, let's end this? I want to eat real dinner. Oh, this is gone. What are we going to have for real dinner? We have pasta. Um, <laughs> dessert pasta? Dessert pasta. <laughs> um, we have stuffed grape leaves. 
We a have sauce with pasta. Sauce with pasta. Do we still have beets or no beets? Mm, we got one beet left. There's crushed crushed tomatoes. It's crushed tomatoes. Olives. Make a pasta sauce. Yeah, we could do a quick little pasta. Let's do that. So I'm like eating all of it with this chocolate mm -hmm. syrup. It's delicious. You have to record that. Bless you. <laughs> Thank you. I'm gonna try with the vanilla. Hang on, I gotta try. We're doing more. It's better with vanilla. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, that is so good. Your mom's heading to bed. Okay, we'll call it then. <laughs> <laughs> She's the only one that's nice enough to say we should end it, so we'll end it. So, finish your muffins, enjoy them, and we'll see you next week. On Cat Chef Kitchen, if you're tuning in, you're like, how did I? I wish I knew about this cook along thing. How do I know about this? Go to catchefkitchen.com and then there's a little like pop up somewhere off to the right hand side about an email list. You can sign up there and you'll get notifications and recipe lists for when we do cook alongs, which is, seems to be once every three months, once a quarter. <laughs> All right, thank you everyone for watching. If you make these, tag Cat Chef Kitchen on. Instagram. Otherwise, just share it with other people and enjoy. Mm, yum. Yum. Thank you and have a good night. Chocolate.